Well, hello everybody. Uh, Z Chip back in the shop. <laughs> As you can see, the shop's not put together. It is a mess. We left it here uh, last spring before we went to contentment and didn't really get a chance to straighten it up. We were in such a hurry. Here's what happens when you leave equipment for a while and don't do anything with it. And this is a real problem I've got to take care of. I've got some bad pitting here on the table saw top. Um, uh, in prior videos, some of you may remember that I let that the neighbor was very kind and gracious to let me store the saws and uh, equipment and things like that over there at his place next door while we worked on the engine for uh, Dinah as we needed the room. Uh, and I think what happened was he had a, over the winter he had a bag of uh, ice melt or something like that that spilled and uh, got on there and really pitted out the top. We can fix that. But it's some pretty good pitting when I have to remove a little bit of rust on the drill press top that will have to be cleaned. Every time that the, it, when it's raining, when this garage door opens, it drops water uh, onto the equipment. And I should know better. I should think to you know, cover them up or something like that before I let that happen. But it happens. And uh, so I get some. See, here are some drops on the jointer. So anyway, thing to do today would be... Uh, Clean up and uh, clean up this uh, this equipment. Tune it up. Get it ready for uh, fall and winter work. Cause we've got got some projects to do for both the house and just generally. There is some pitting. It's not terrible but uh, it should not have sat this long unfortunately we had to get out of town and go there's some pretty good rust that's standing up there the rust is standing up pretty good let's see how much we can get off coming off but not not pretty that's for sure so just using this straight edge to Get in here and get most of the stuff that's sticking up off of the table so we can see what we got, see what we're working with here. Okay, so everybody who remembers uh, what, junior high or high school science knows about pH. Uh, salt is a base with a very high pH. On the other hand, lemon is an acid with a very low pH. One of these will counteract the activity of the other. So. I'm just going to take a little lemon juice, put it on there. It's too bad you can't see it in the camera, but it's actually starting to bubble. We're getting a reaction out of it already. It's starting to neutralize. The um, activity going on here, it's good. Concentrate some juice in these real bad areas where i got bad pitting. Um, you could use any acid. Vinegar uh, would be a good acid to use. There are also some, you know, products you can buy like navel jelly and a product called Evapo Rust and, you know, stuff like that. You could buy those things if you want to, but, um, you know, basically any good acid will take care of it. And you can see where it's already begun to work on that. It's turning it dark, meaning it's neutralizing it. Now, the table may actually wind up keeping these dark spots, and that's just the price you pay for letting, for it's the price I pay for, you know, letting my table get this bad. Uh, but it shouldn't affect the quality of cuts or anything like that. These are really, you know, this is woodworking. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, like fine machine work or anything that requires a great deal of. Uh, precision. So I'll just rub this around, let it sit for a while, hopefully it won't dry before I can get to it again, and uh, let it do its thing. We'll go ahead and hit it with the Scotch-Brite pad. Let's see what we get. It's clean in the the real light surface rust on the table really readily. I mean, it's coming right up. Some of this heavier stuff sitting around takes a little extra work, 
but it is coming off. As you'll see, it's just scrubbing right off. See? That line of rust right there. So let me get that off. Yeah, see? And it took it off. On a, on a table saw with an iron tabletop like this, cast iron top, it's a machine surface. You want to be real careful about using things like steel wool, um, unless it's a very, very fine steel wool, uh, or any kind of grinder or wheel or anything like that, because you can really, you can tear up a table quickly uh, with those kinds of things. And these dark spots, they may be ugly, but you know what? They're not hurting anything staying there as long as they're not sticking up and interfering with your work. You know, there's a grain uh, to this uh, iron, and there's also a grain to an aluminum top, if you have an aluminum top. And you can see it. You can see the way that the grain goes. And so I would also avoid using anything that is orbital, like an orbitable, like an orbital sander to do this. Stick to just, you know, something like this, where you go back and forth mostly, okay? And uh, keep that grain nice and pretty. So I'm, I am feeling a little bit of resistance right here with this line of stuff. Like maybe I didn't get it all scraped off. But as I go over with the Scotch-Brite pad, I can feel it loosening up and getting smoother. And that's what you want. You want to get it back to the point where it is like glass smooth and you could take a towel and lay it on there and it would glide across just like you waxed a car. Let that sit some more. And I think I'll use the lemon juice on the rest of the table too just for grains to pretty it up. You know, I have a small shop and so there's always a temptation to use your table saw top as a working surface. Um, and you know, even though you try to protect it, stuff just happens that you don't realize can happen. For instance, on this right here, this, this is from glue uh, that I was using when I was gluing up the wagon. And, and that's a former video of ours. You see how we made that wagon. But I was using the table saw as a work surface so for gluing up parts of that wagon. And I was very careful to cover the top of the saw with some wax paper so that I wouldn't get glue uh, on the tabletop. However, what I didn't realize is that laying that wax paper down here on this cold top and letting it sit overnight actually caused condensate to form in between the wax paper and the tabletop. And that's where these spots came from, not from the glue itself, but from actually trying to protect the table. <laughs> so. That's one thing to keep in mind. I think the best uh, thing to do is if you are gonna use your saw uh, for a work surface is to get a thin piece of wood, like a quarter inch thick plywood or something that you can lay across the entire top of the table uh, to protect it. And then you have a good work surface. And if you wanna make sure it doesn't slip off, you can glue like a little lip to the underside of the board so it fits here and say over there too so it won't shift around on you. But I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I put some more lemon juice on here. I wiped it off once, as you saw. Put some more lemon juice on here. It's been sitting. And as you can see, where the lemon juice dries up, it begins to do what we call flash rusting. Rust is coming back because it's just an exposed iron table. So when you wipe this off, you want to make sure you wipe it off dry. And you may still get a little bit of flash rust, and that's okay because the next step is going to take care of that. Paper towel is pretty absorbent. Can get this stuff up quickly. That's good. Like I said, we're still going to have a little bit of rust on this, but okay, we can we can we can take care of a little bit. I'm going to get as much of this up as we can. Scrubbing it afresh with the lemon juice, and then I'll wipe it off quickly before it rusts, before it flashes again. There we go. See. Good old lemon juice or vinegar or any kind of mild acid you happen to have on hand will work for this. Keep in mind that if you have an aluminum top, <laughs> your reaction on this will be uh, more severe and you might want to think twice about what kinds of acids or cleaners you use on an aluminum top. And here's what it looks like after it's been cleaned. Maybe you can see that pitting. 
little better. Yeah, that's pretty ugly. I should never have let this happen. Next step, WD-40. WD, as many of you know, stands for water displacement. And so it's really good at um, controlling things like rust and corrosion and stuff like that. We'll squirt it down and scrub it with the WD. When we relocate permanently to contentment uh, in the spring of 2020, we're going to take, of course, all of our things with us, and I'm going to have to find temporary storage for my woodworking equipment until we get a shop built. And uh, so, you know, I think about this. Now, contentment is a much drier climate than out here in the central U.S. where we're at. There's not a lot of humidity at contentment, except during the winter. And uh, so I think what I will do is before I store it, I will oil this top or put some kind of thick uh, oily tar paste or something like on it, like a cosmoline or something like that. And then I will cover it. Uh, I will stick a heavy piece of plastic to that to sort of seal it. And uh, hopefully that'll protect the top really well while it's in storage. So I'm going to finish cleaning this up and then we'll polish it. So next step is to clean the table really good with a rubbing compound. Rubbing compounds are really mild abrasive and uh, it'll clean up a lot of this really uh, small surface dirt and we'll clean it off. Any of the leftover, um, you know, mild flash rust and stuff is sitting here. You rub it pretty good, you know, just work it in, let it dry and then rub it off. Um, sometimes this stuff, if you got a really dirty surface, it can stick to the table. I mean, it's hard to get off, hard to polish off. You might have to do several applications and stuff to get it, get where you want it. But, you know, basically just clean it. You can work in a circular motion on this one, but uh, always good to go with the grain to get that stuff out of there. This is also a good time to polish any other surfaces that you want to on the saw, like this where the fence uh, guide rolls along. Also the track. I mean, only only clean and polish the stuff you want to move freely, <laughs> which is just about every, every, every moving part. Now, inside the saw, the trunnion and stuff like that, you probably want to use a really waxy kind of uh, grease uh, for that. Just, you know, just sort of clean it off with a brush or nylon brush or something and then go back with a, a waxy kind of grease uh, that'll stick to those gears pretty well but and while you're at it since you're cleaning the tracks it only makes sense to clean the things that glide in the tracks like this square so you know take some rubbing compound rub down this uh this uh piece of channel or this uh this uh, piece of steel and uh, make sure it glides smoothly in the track. It's also a good time to tune it up, make sure it's uh, sitting properly and doing all that good stuff. It'd be true also for the throat plate that goes in here. Clean that too. I mean, anything that the wood has the glide across, if you can make it smoother, uh, it'll do a much better job of cutting and make your life easier too. And uh, finally, wipe it down with a good wax. This is not a good wax. Uh, but I can't find my paste wax for some reason. Use a good paste wax if you can. I mean, I'm just using this because I got it handy and I want to get this done. Um, but I'll come back over with some paste wax when I find it. Clean it again, probably. Um, just go through it, you know, buff it in, polish it, and it should get kind of where it should glide. The cloth should glide across there fairly easily. Again, polish everywhere where you want things to operate smoothly and glide smoothly. And uh, there you go. I feel terrible for leaving the table this way where it got that bad, but I'm glad it's not worse. So anyway, that's how I do it. If you guys got some suggestions on how you do it, I'd love to hear it. Thanks.